Now we're going to rotate to the bottom of the part. So this is the front face. We're going to rotate to the bottom. And we're going to put in a uh, uh, some slots. So going back to our drawing, we're looking at the bottom and we have our bent over corner flange here on the left. We have these two slots and these two slots. And we have a detail view on the right lower half corner showing the typical dimensions of all those features. So let's go back to our model and we're going to start drawing this in the lower right hand corner. So we're going to go sketch. We're sketching on the flange. snapped the view that's normal to that. And I'm going to draw some circles. So each of those notches terminates in a circle a different size. So I'm going to do the two notches that are on the right hand side and then we'll mirror them for the left hand side. Okay, so I've got circles. Um, I'm going to highlight the center points of each of those circles and we're going to make them vertically aligned. And I'm going to highlight the bottom two circles. I'm going to make those equal in size. Then I'm going to highlight the top two. I'm going to make those equal in size to each other. All right. Now let's go back to our drawing and let's put dimensions on those. So our top circles are called out as uh, radiuses. Uh, radius of seven, 75 thousandths for the top ones. So we're going to go back to this and we're going to put a dimension on one of the top circles. Select out and we're going to accept the dimension that's there for now. And we're going to change the leader to a radius. And that will allow us to put in 0 .07, 0.075, which is the radial size of that circle. And it should update the one that we, corresponding one that was equal in size. Now we're going to go to our other dimension. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to accept the default size so that we can change the leader to a radius. And then we're going to double click on the number again, go back to our drawing. And the lower radius is, is 115 thousandths. And that lower one should change size as well as the top one. Okay. Now we need a dimension from horizontal dimension. So we're going to go from center of the circle to the right side of the part, drag over. And our dimension, according to the drawing, is 188 thousandths. Okay, so that should have aligned all of the holes. And then our distance between them, we're going to set up a center line between the two. And then we're going to do the same thing with the top pattern. And the reason is I want to highlight that top center line, hold the control key down, and we're going to make those equal in length. And that'll allow us to just dimension the one set here. So we're going to dimension the length of that center line on the bot lower one. We're going to go back to our drawing and the distance between center to center is a quarter of an inch. 
0.250, and that should affect both of them because we made an equal relationship between them. And then we need a dimension from edge of part. So from edge of part to center of this hole, 0.75. Now that's a typical dimension, so we need to do the same thing for the opposite side. We're going to go from edge of part to the center of edge of part to center of the small hole. Okay, so three quarters of an inch from the edge for the smaller hole, because that's where the actual screw is. Uh, the slots to allow us to slide this um, plate on uh, without having to undo the screws. Okay, so we're done with that dimension and we um, dimension command, but now we need to turn these two holes into an actual slot. So I'm going to draw a couple lines. Um, the main thing is they're vertical uh, when you draw them. And that you don't uh, make unintended uh, relationships with them. Okay, so they're vertical and then we're going to hold the control key down and select each one. And you're going to make those tangent uh, to the smaller of the two holes in the pattern. Okay. Now, once you have those established, um, we're going to trim off what we don't want. So we're going to trim off so we end up with a slot here. So I'm going to power trim. I'm going to trim off these two legs here. I'm going to trim off the legs on the big side of the circle and inside the circle, big circle. And then we're going to trim off two edges of the big circle and the inside radiuses of the small circle. And we should have a fully uh, contained um, face here. All right, so we're gonna zoom out and repeat that on the lower pattern. Uh, draw a vertical line. Uh, we're gonna hit escape, we're gonna enter the line command. Do the same thing, click, click. And uh, that one didn't pick up vertical, so I'm going to make a vertical relationship. Pick the first line, hold the control key down, pick the first circle, tangent. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag the line past just so it's easier to trim later. And same thing here, I don't want to uh, make an accident relationship there. I'm going to highlight the second line, hold the control key down. We're going to select the top circle. We're going to make those tangent. Let's drag that up. And now we're going to go to the power trim. Trim off the two tabs on top. Trim off the tabs inside the big circle. Trim the big circle on the inside and the small circle. And we should get an enclosed circle uh, slot feature. We're going to accept that trim and we're going to zoom out. We did everything right and didn't uh, damage any of our center lines or dimensions. We should be fully constrained. It looks like we are not. So I'm going to go ahead and test that. I'm going to use um, I'm going to rebuild, which kicks us out of sketch mode. But it looks like the negative symbol went away. If we go back and double check. Yeah, the negative symbol went away. So we are fully constrained. So we're going to go to features. We're going to do an extruded cut. Let's go ahead and look at it in a 3D, 3D view. If I can get my mouse to cooperate. In a 3D view, we're going to expand out this. If you didn't have your sketch highlighted like I didn't, you got to highlight it. Uh, we're not doing blind, but we're going to do up to next. So it's going to cut through up to the next surface, which would be the inside of the sheet metal box. 
and we're going to accept that slot. Okay, so we now have uh, geometry for slots on one side of the part. It's a good time to save. Now we want to mirror that those features onto the opposite side flange. To do so, we need to create a reference plane down the center. So we're going to go reference plane, and we're going to base our first selection under first reference on an existing plane in the direction we want. So it's going to be the uh, right side plane. And then we don't want to do an offset like the default is, and we're going to make it parallel. So our new plane is going to be parallel to it, and our second reference is going to be the midpoint of the box, the four inch dimension of the box. So we need to not use the side that has this little flange or it'll be off centered a little bit. We want to pick our reference on the front of the part. So hover over the front edge until you see the icon change. To that. That is the midpoint of that edge, so we're going to select it. Now that gives us our plane right on the middle of the box. So if we change the size of the box, the plane will always be on the center of it. So it's fully defined. We've got a green light to go ahead and let's hit accept. All right, good time to save again. And then we're going to do a uh, pattern mirror. So we're going to go to mirror. We're going to select our features. Our, our plane was already selected. If it isn't, you're going to have to select the plane. So it's plane number one. And we're going to, the features we're going to mirror are going to be the cut we just made. So the last cut extrude. So we're going to highlight it on the tree. And it should preview it on the left side of the box. So let's hit accept. And it cuts our pattern through. Okay, great. We've now finished the modeling for this. Now, the next step, um, I'm going to show you quickly how to do a flat pattern. We will probably review that again when it comes to actually cutting the part. But before you do this, let's save. And let's make all of our planes invisible. And you notice there's this little thing here called a flat pattern. So there's two commands we can do use. We can use the unfold and we use the flat pattern command. So the unfold command, what it allows us to do is a temporary state uh, where if you're modeling, features can be put in that are done um, after the folding. In this case, we want all our features to be in the flat pattern. We're not going to machine them after the thing's folded. But we can go ahead and go through the process. So you're going to say unfold and you're going to pick a fixed face. So I'm going to pick this flange here. And then it's going to ask you what bends to unfold. I'm going to collect all the bends. And I'm going to hit accept. And it unfolds our part. Now, if you're modeling, any features you make here will not occur will not occur in the part. Um, if you model here, will not occur in the part uh, in the flat in the flat in the folded up state. Um, if you make them after the unfold, so you have to decide: Am I making features? at the flat flat pattern stage or am I making them at the finish stage? Okay, so now that is more of a viewing and modeling convention. I'm going to uh, suppress the uh, the fold and we go back to our unfolded uh, state. Okay, okay. when you actually are making a flat pattern, it's more uh, accurate calculation. Um, you're going to pick the you're going to select the flatten command. And this creates an actual flat pattern uh, that can be used for a drawing. And 
generates your bend lines for you. Okay, so that's your two at, uh, options for flat pattern. And to exit the flat pattern command, you just select on the flatten icon. Okay, we'll revisit that when it comes to actually doing the water jet pattern on this because we will need the uh, uh, flat pattern to generate um, our model profile for the water jet cam. Okay. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you. It's one of the more complicated uh, procedures. Uh, there are a lot more other sheet metal commands that you can explore. But those are the basic sheet metal commands and how to model a sheet metal part. Thanks a lot, and I will catch you on the next one.